Okay, Shalom. Supernatural. <laughs> Man. It's strange too because with for those of us who are going through this supernatural experience, we thought we were just people, kids growing up to adults. Now we see that there have been just like that movie Constantine, have you ever seen that? You have earth angels and earth demons. And only the only the ones whose eyes are awakened can see them, who they are. So that's who we are. I believe we're earth angels. <laughs> you know, I'm just you know, I don't know, I'm just talking, but uh because the the, the, the evil side want to prevent us for some reason. And they're letting themselves known. And those entities, that's why I say a lot of these, I can't speak for all, but I'm just talking about the evil side. A lot of these people that are calling themselves pastors and different ones that's in these uh, 501c3 churches, the devil's churches. A lot of these people probably aren't people. <laughs> They're, like they say, the gatekeepers to the other side. They're entities. Or at the very least, they're uh, angels in uh, wolves in sheep clothing, so to speak. And like I said, I think I told the story before too. Um, one time I was, right before my aunt had passed, she had called me, you know, she used to call me by my nickname that they gave me, because uh, I used to always watch Scooby-Doo all the time when I was little. So she used to call me Scooby. So she said, hey Scooby, I need you to come around here and pray for my house. Because there's something not right in there, you know, it's an entity. Uh, so I was I'm just looking at the time. So I said, "Okay, here I come." So I, I took my Bible, and that's why I said it's, it's another thing too. Is Abba? Of course, his name is Yahuwah, Abba Yah, and the one we call Jesus' name is Yahusha. But then another gentleman made a, a point. It's about your heart. It's about your faith. Even in the scriptures, when the man they call Jesus, in the, as they say Jesus in the scriptures, he said, your belief has made you whole. A lot of times you ask him, do you believe? Well, let it be unto you as you believe. So it wasn't all the time of saying his name. It was just, did you, your belief in who he is has made you whole. And okay, let me get back to the story. So then I went over and I took the uh it's on the Bible, what they call the Bible. And when I got over there, but before I went, I had a strong feeling to come over me and say, pray and repent, ask for forgiveness before you go. So I got in the car, I repented for my sins, and said, Abba, forgive me. You know, I didn't call him Abba because I didn't know no better back then. I didn't, know, I, you, know, just, you know, call him Lord or whatever. But my heart was towards him because whatever his name was, I believed in him. So I said, forgive me for my sins, you know, and so forth. And then I went, drove over to her house. I got out immediately. I felt the spirit of the Almighty Yah come over me and I, I read Psalms 91 out loud and as I read Psalms 91 the, the, the Ruach HaKadosh ha ha uh, had me to speak in heavenly language and as I was doing it I felt so much power through the spirit that something first of all it was dark in, back there to see how all the lights out this 
cat came flying out the back room. And something came flying behind the cat. And then whatever that thing was, I saw the little spark behind it and it knocked the door wide open and it wasn't windy anything. And it just knocked the door wide open and the, and the uh, fit or the, you know, the gate by the, on the door stuck to the, to the wall. And then she said, it didn't, it didn't come back. So please, when I'm telling these things, just understand that, that I'm acknowledging y'all and I'm not pumping up my stuff. I'm just telling you the story of how it went. So, that situation happened. And now let me go back in the past. Another thought just came back. I remember my great aunt, Velma. My great aunt. She had called one day, and I was probably about what, 11, 12, 11, 12, something like that. I thought it had to be something like that. I'd have to, you know, add it up, but it had to be something like that. She called and said, by, you know, my given name, baby, am I going to die from this? I'm a kid. I don't know what you thought. I said, well, not from that. You know, but since she ended up passing, not too long after that, but I was like, why do people put that type of belief in me or, or put that kind of pressure on me to know these things and I'm a kid? You know, and, and like I said, if, and I'm going to tell you another story. If this is too much for you, this, this accept this as a, uh, as, a, as a fairy tale. <laughs> if this is too much for you. One, one time, when I was probably about, I had to have been about seven, me and my grandmother walked to the, we lived in Los Angeles, walked to the edge of the porch, one early bright morning, to the north side of the porch. And as we walked out, we looked up, and it was this saucer like they show on the movies just sitting there, hovering like above the house. And as we looked, we made sure we seen it. And then it skipped off the, uh, the sky probably about two or three times and then the hyperspace started and was out of sight. Talking about the supernatural. Then I had, I'm gonna show you another dream. And right before, and I'm gonna finish after this. Right before, this thing, gang stalking situation really happened. I really, I became aware of it. I had a dream. And in my dream there was a pond full of snakes. All intertwined and curled up. But I was above them. And then I had a thought to tell me don't get too close because one of them might try to bite you. And, and immediately after that voice told me don't get too close, one raised up and, and, and struck at me, but he missed me. I was out of his reach. You know, there, so there, there's a lot of other things, but I don't have time to tell them. So I would love to hear your comments. Shalom.